I'm Paul Bennett at Downey Stunda Creations here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located right along Maine's Bull Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. I'd like to give a big shout out to Black Dog Sailing. It's a YouTube channel I just recently discovered. And uh, he takes sailing vessel Black Dog from Virginia down the ICW heading down towards Miami. And uh, I just watched a few episodes. I thought it was great. I've included uh, a link to the channel down below in the video description. And uh, so any of my uh, viewers that are into sailing and boating, uh, you might want to check it out because he points out a lot of great features, uh, stops along the way, things you might like to see if you're planning that trip yourself sometime. Uh, this video is all about, uh, it, well it's actually part two of my portable generator enclosure. I began that project last year, right about the same time. And uh, actually it's only a day before a year, and tomorrow it'll be one full year uh, since I posted that video. It was the 15th of November last year that I posted it. And I had to build an enclosure for my portable generator because a lot of these portable generators, I happen to have a Generac model, and it states right on it, you're not supposed to use it outside in the elements and rain and all that sort of thing, which is kind of stupid because that's when you most need a generator. That's when the power goes out. And it takes up a lot of room living in my shop. So I poured a concrete pad. I drew up some plans, built the framework, put the roof on, but it was all open. It was just left open because shortly after I did that and I released the video before I could complete it and come up with part two, all the cold weather came rushing in, uh, sub-zero temperatures and snow and ice and everything else. So that just got put on the back burner. And I've been working on my sailboat. The past several videos have been all about that. Uh, trying to race against the clock, trying to get as much done as possible before winter. And so once again, this project was a bit neglected, but I really, got to, I really had to get that generator out of my shop. So... I finally got around to it. I completed it. I just took some very cheap OSB oriented strand board from the local home center. And uh, I you just take measurements right off the framework and I cut the panels to fit, screwed it into place. I, I put the generator in there so I could measure from the generator to see where I needed the doors to open. The back door will remain open, it helps to get the generator loaded in. So you have a back door and a front door, you can just run it right through. But it also, you open that door when you're running it so that you allow the exhaust out. There's a little access hatch on the side that I'm putting in to allow access for the cable that connects to the generator. And then the, the cable just runs out to a, uh, to a fitting, a plug I have in the side of the house. And uh, because it's all wired for the generator. And so it's, it's pretty basic. It's uh, not very complicated. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I put a link to part one in the video description below. I've also included the link to the free plans if you'd like the free plans. And the free plans, the dimensions are just arbitrary. I mean, they're to fit my generator. Your generator may be completely different, different size, so just alter the, this will just give you a rough idea of what I did. You can alter those dimensions. Again, I apologize for taking so long to get this part two done, but, uh, but here it is. And please subscribe, like or dislike, share the video, that helps me out a lot. I appreciate it, that helps me to continue producing these videos. And, uh, Check out my Patreon page. There's a lot of good information and tips and free plans on that. And if you do uh, subscribe to Patreon, uh, you can do it for as little as maybe a dollar a month. And you get all kinds of stuff you won't find on my website uh, or off my YouTube channel. But even now on Patreon, I do have some free plans that are available to the public without subscribing, including free dinghy plans. So check it out. Thanks again for watching.
I'm going to need more OSB for the uh, generator enclosure. I don't want to go out and buy another sheet, but I have this old headboard that's been discarded. And if you've watched uh, many of my previous videos, you know that I believe in recycling, reusing, repurposing materials whenever possible. It saves a lot of money. And there's left, less material going to the landfill. So, first of all, I'm going to take off these supports. And what's cool is these screws are perfectly fine. They're not corroded. They can be reused. These uh, pieces of wood can be reused as cleats or something else. Be used in another project. This cover, once I take it off, it's only stapled on. Once I take that off, that can be used like a moving blanket to protect equipment in the shop. So all of this is completely reusable. And then of course the OSB, which is what I'm going after for the generator enclosure. I'm using this little small nail, nail claw uh, lifting tool. It's usually a small tacks and brads. Uh, it's used for that, for removing those. This is made by Stanley. And uh, I'll, I'll get a close-up shot of this a little bit later. And I'm just using that. It's, it's perfect for lifting underneath. These are just staples. I can lift under the staple with one side of the claw and the other one is used as a uh, to, to push against like a lever. And I'm keeping all these staples together. I don't want them on the ground. I don't want people to step on them. Your feet. And those will go in the trash. Can't reuse those. That's the only thing that won't get reused. Here's a close-up of that tool I mentioned and uh, take a look at this here. You See that little claw there? And that's what I'm using. It's got a little bend in it. It's easy to pry up the staples or if you got tacks or small nails. It's made by Stanley. Alright, I finished, finished getting that pad off all the way around. Just got a big pile of staples. And uh, now I have to get off this foam pad and it too is also stapled. And that's going to take me quite a while. I'm not even going to bother to film that. You don't need plans for this if you use the plans to build one of these that I put in part one. Um, I didn't do drawings for these. I just took the measurements off. That's all you have to do. Chances are your generator is a different size. You're going to have different, uh, you're going to alter the size of your framework anyway. It's simple enough to do. Uh, I had some scraps so I just cut these out. Once I get a couple of clamps I can make any adjustments I need to make. Just want to get them in position. I'm going to hold it up there temporarily. This small panel that's up top, uh, it's not something that has to open. It's just going to be permanently fixed. So I can just go ahead and screw it. And again, it's just from leftover scraps of OSB I had kicking around. I just took a quick measurement. Doesn't fit perfectly, doesn't have to, as long as it just blocks things up a bit. Weather doesn't get in. And as you probably saw a little bit earlier, um, I had a little bit of a problem here trying to get the screws. The uh, This resin they have on the OSB, the screws are kind of tough. They don't want to start very well. So I just went and got a drill bit just to start the hole. And uh, that's all I have to do. It's an extra step, but it just makes it easier than trying to get the screw to catch and go in. Hey, much easier. Past few days now it's been below freeze, well below freezing at night and in the mornings. And then later on it gets just maybe a couple of degrees above freezing. So this cold front just kind of moved in and it's pretty much staying with us. Okay, there's the hole.
Okay, on this side of the enclosure, I can just go ahead and put a solid panel. I don't need to put a door here because I won't really have to access this side in order to put in fuel or to plug in the generator. And the exhaust exit out, exits out the back. And I need a door in the back as well as the front to get the generator in and out anyway. So that's cool. And I'll just need one little flap on the other side and I'll show you why. Okay, here on the other side, uh, you can see the, uh, the panel here where the, uh, where the cords plug in. So I have to have a little door or flap that opens in order to access those so I can uh, connect the cord to the generator. And then once that's in place, the door can stay open. I'll just have it, I'll have it so that it goes upwards. And uh, the cord doesn't have to go very far. It goes uh, over this way, right over here to this, this box right here is where the generator cord goes. And now it's just a matter of getting a door for the front and a door for the back. And uh, the whole reason I put the generator in now before I have it serviced is I just want to see where everything is so when I go to make the panels I can fit them to fit this particular generator. Your generator may be different. So again, just take all your measurements right off the work itself and uh, from your actual generator, just like I'm doing here. This is just uh, corrugated plastic sign material that I threw on here temporarily and uh, keep the generator covered in case it rained or it slanted or snowed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off. And this is the door. It encompasses the whole front of this enclosure. It'll go up flush up against this piece. And I'll screw it in place just where this is here and temporarily and that will hold it in position so I can go ahead and attach the hinges. I'm going to put the hinges on that side so that it will open like that to access the generator and pull it out. And I have enough swing room, it will clear the corner of the shop. So that will work out. That's fairly straightforward. Well, this is kind of a, a backwards way to do it. But I have these old reclaimed hinges and uh, I think I'm going to see if these will work. I didn't want to go out and buy new ones. So uh, I'm just going to locate it, locate the hinge, and uh, see if I can make it work. Normally I'd put it on like this. This part here would be on the door. It was not that heavy. You see the problem is, is that this the hinge isn't really designed to, to work this way, so I'm kind of improvising. So don't do what I do, get the proper hinges. But I use what I have. I should be using an awl or something to get the screw started in the right position. And again, I'm just using it to run the screw in a little bit, but I'll torque it by hand. I'll get a hand uh, screwdriver. Okay, I'll just fit the other next one down here somewhere, just like that one. Some people are going to ask, 
why don't I just mount these hinges on the inside? They would fit better. And you can put them the way pretty much they're supposed to be. The answer to that is because over the years we've made a lot of these little outbuildings and sheds on the farm and we have some pretty rough winters here in Maine and sometimes you need to get into something and it's all frozen shut and won't open and sometimes it helps if you can take the hinges off but if they're mounted on the inside where you can't get to them that's impossible put them on the outside if I have to, if I really need to get into it and uh, I don't have any other way uh, maybe I need to pry the door open from this side get too much snow and heavy ice build up over there uh, I can do it. It just makes life a little bit easier uh, during the rough weather. And we have some very long and cold winters here in Maine. And I don't have any fancy latches or knobs or anything so we're just going to do something very simple. I'm going to do just take a little block of wood and uh, clamp it out here to the outside. Okay, get another one in. Okay, so I have a knob, but now I've got to be able to latch it. I just have a screw with a washer on it. You probably can't see it in the camera too far away. And it's just a piece of heavy duty, heavy gauge wire. And uh, bailing wire works. And I put a little bit of a, a loop in the end of the wire with a pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm just putting that screw and washer through there. And I'm going to put that screw right in here. Okay, so all I'm going to do now, I'll hold the door closed and right in my latch. I can put it in the side, I'll just wrap it around the front, it's easy for me. And with the screw in only partially, I'll take this heavy wire give it a little twist and I'll just trim that end off probably or just bend it just leave it like that that's all I need that'll hold the door closed uh, it's a simple solution it doesn't really cost you any money you just use scraps you have kicking around I'm going to do the same thing on the back door the way the roof comes down it overhangs if I put the door all the way to the top edge it'll bind it'll hit that edge of the roof so what I had to do is have to make a strip, put the strip up under here, and now there's enough clearance when this door is in place it'll open. So I have the back door on now, it was just a, a repeat, similar installation, just like on the front. And uh, same type of hinges, another pair I had. And I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, in order to make a knob and a latch. I'm just going to um, clamp this on here somewhere and uh, once I have that screwed into place I'll go ahead and use that same type of wire and screws in order to keep it shut. Keeps that door closed and that's good enough.